Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to teach you about Jenkins, which is a very popular continuous integration tool. After going through this tutorial, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Jenkins will be absolutely clear to you. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, Cloud and Containers Technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for a classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Jenkins. So let's start it. So what is Jenkins? What is Jenkins? So we say, okay, Jenkins does CI, CI2. Now, what is CI? So we say okay fine CI stand for the continuous integration continuous integration so now you need to understand what is continuous integration okay what is continuous integration right so I am not sure about it how many of you have watched the big video which has I was uh, suggesting every everyone to uh, Two weeks before, I don't know how many of you have watched. I always mention like the, the understanding of the concept and the process is very much important. So if you have not watched this video, come to the DevOpsCourse.com. Okay, go to the tutorials, click on the DevOps, and this is the video which I'm talking about, which you can see on my screen. DevOps systems here. Okay, this is uh, somewhere close to three and a half hours of videos, which is mostly it's a lecture, uh, mostly it's a discussion, nothing uh, technical, but understanding is important because you have enrolled for the DevOps courses and uh, before, you know, getting into the sort of, you know, tools, learnings and things like that, you need to understand what is all about the DevOps, what is CI, what is CD, uh, how this is impacting the organization, how this is beneficial for you and many more things. And this video will talk about each and everything. And uh, I am recommending this video for everyone. So please watch this. So just for time being, what I have to do, I have to define it. So if, uh, what is a continuous integration? So continuous integration is a process in which you do the continuous build, okay? Plus, uh, uh, continuous build means automated build, automated continuous, let's put it like this, automated continuous build, plus automated continuous testing, and then immediate feedback, okay? Immediate feedback. So now you must be wondering why we need this one. So uh, we we define, okay, there's a process which which we, we say like uh, uh, automated continuous build, automated continuous testing, and then immediate feedback, and this keeps on running in the increment, in the recursive way. So then we can find out the health of our projects, whether the build is failing or test is failing, what where the problems are, and then you can fix it immediately if you're getting the immediate feedback. So that's very much important. And these things, we call it continuous integration. So now this is in the simplest form, like continue, automated build, automated testings, and then immediate feedback. But what about if we can uh, elaborate these things? So what is the meaning of the automated continuous build and continuous testing and immediate feedback? So let me elaborate it. So when here we talk about automated build, it's like this, automated static code analysis, analysis okay then after that we do automated build then after that we do that automated um, uh, what is it we do that automated unit testing ut and then after that we automated packaging and we after that we do that automated deploy 
to repository and when when we talk about the repository this repository is become nexus right nexus or artifactory or something like that and then from the artifactory or nexus we deploy to automated way to the qa server so we deploy to the qa server and then we do the automated acceptance test acceptance test which includes all sort of the testing which includes like smoke testing stage i um, mean performance testing security testing alpha testing beta testing black box testing white box box testing so whatever the sort of the testing you know that is been called as a acceptance testing and then after that you run all this sort of acceptance testing and if acceptance testing passes also you accept automated uh, what is it automated uh, what is it um, code coverage code coverage and then once everything passes you do the immediate and you get it everything and then you do the automated release so the release the moment is become a release this is called continuous delivery so we are not doing right now we are talking about only till automated coverage so now here what are the tools will be involved so if you look at it here now in the automated static code analysis we we are going to need sonar cube okay now after this okay we are going to need maven for the building purpose for the unit test probably if you are a java based project then you need a junit if it's a dot net based project you need a n unit packaging it can be anything exes jar var ear msi apks sort of depends like so in this uh, demo i'll be using jar sort of packaging okay then here for the de app deployment to repo so here here i'll be using nexus where we can deploy and for app uh, for that uh, deployment to the qa you know that we can use chef we can use puppet and things like that and then you have acceptance testing which can be anything like a qtp selenium hp quality central and many more things many more tools we have it. and then code coverage we have a jacoco kabuchira coverity and things like that and this is the tools so now you saw that these are the tools we use it so now what we are discussing right now we are discussing jenkins so we understood okay what is jenkins so we say like okay jenkins is a ci tool ci stand for continuous integration now you want to elaborate what is a ci what is a continuous integration then we talk about okay continuous integration is nothing but is automated continuous build automated continuous testing and then getting the immediate feedback this is a process which we call continuous integration but if you elaborate all these three things then as part of the build and testing you have to do a lot of things you know you have to do static code analysis you have to uh, do automated build unit testing packaging deploy to report uh, deploy to qa servers and acceptance testing code coverage and all these things okay and the top of that some of the extra things which you have to do is like integration with get for the getting the source code management integration uh, with jira for updating the tickets all these things you do and everything you do in automated way that is important okay so now automated base so now this step stuff we call it a continuous integration and now you are using jenkins for the same thing so any questions so far do you have before continuing further any questions doubts okay so now i am going to talk about so now if you here we are talking about so many tools here we are talking about the get we are talking about the jira for the issue, uh, ticket management we are talking about sonar queue maven j unit jar nexus uh, puppet selenium jaco so many tools are there so each of those each of these tools has a, have a some you know specific uh, 
us. So in RQ, we will do the static code analysis, quality management, now we will do the build stuff, GNIT will do the unit testings, JAR will help you to create a packages, Nexus, Nexus will help you to store the packages, Chef and Puppet will help you to deploy the uh, to the large number of machines, Synonym will help you to perform the acceptance testing after the deployment, and Jakoku will help you to find out the percentage of the testing which you are doing. And then, getting it, all these things done in automated way and immediate feedback is a, is a continuous integration process. So now, let's back to the topics. Now, so if I redefine again, okay, what is Jenkins in other terminologies, so now you understood why we have this why we we call it C, Jenkins as CI tool, but again, uh, if I help you to understand what is a Jenkins, so again you understood J Jenkins is a CI tools, but also it is a free, it is open source, okay, it is open source, it is uh, uh, you know uh, it is uh, empowered empowered with thousands of plugins, okay, thousands of plugins. Okay, why? So it's like this. It's a framework. It's a framework developed in Java, Java for any technology, for automating any technology CI/CD process, CI process. Okay, so now you understood the Jenkins is a CI tool, it's a free, it's open source, it's in, in power the thousands of plugins, it's a, it's a kind of framework developed in Java, but it can be used for any technology. Now you must be wondering what is this plugin? Okay, so let me, let me tell you, Jenkins is, Jenkins by default comes with engine only which can understand the plugins in a simple way if i put it okay jenkins if you install the jenkins and if you do not install the plugins then you won't understand about you understand you, go, you won't get any features so it's like this jenkins is a very you know open framework jenkins is like a kind of platform where if you want the features you have to install the plugins Okay, if you want any functionality, you have to install the plugin. So, it's basically, basically, Jenkins by default without the plugins is nothing. Okay, Jenkins without the plugin is nothing. But the moment you empower the Jenkins with the plugins, then it start behaving like a boss. Okay, so that's important. So now, so far, we have understood what is Jenkins. Why we need a Jenkins? Why Jenkins? And now all these things I have explained to you. Because uh, you do the static code analysis using the sonar cube, you do the build management using Maven, you do the hell lot of other tasks also for the using different different tools. But we need one tool, one tool which can integrate with every tool. That's a function. Fun that's a thing. So you need a one tool which can integrate with any available tools, what we, whatever we have it. And which who can do that? Only Jenkins. Jenkins can integrate with the any tools and using plugins. Okay. Jenkins will help you to share the dashboard, share the updates about this about the development about this project with the teams okay so here you will not be able to share that blog file or status and things like that of the maven jlme jar all this stuff with the teams but this tools will place it will create a kind of centralized dashboard centralized dashboard okay centralized dashboard for sharing the uh, the updates about the project with the team. Okay, this can send you the notifications also about incident, about the about anything which you anything which you are doing, which you are doing through jobs. Okay, anything. So basically, it is a kind of tool which can integrate into everything. It is a kind of very rich UI 
web based tools it can send you the notification you can trigger the jobs okay you can uh, we can set that schedule is like this as you can do c c h e you can do the scheduling okay you can do the triggering based on the based on the conditions okay so, so many things you can do that and that's the reason jenkins is become a powerful so now so far we what we have understood we have understood like okay what is jenkins why the jenkins what is ci is why the ci is important for a project and things like that now let's explore what how to install jenkins okay how to install jenkins so in order to install the jenkins first and important things you have to understand what is the prerequisite so prerequisite is as you know that i told you is developed in java so the the any project any application which is developed in java the prerequisite is jre okay jre but i am going to install jdk for that because jdk has a inbuilt jre as well as a uh, 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 development environment also why because we are going to need uh, this uh, jdk uh, things as well so you can install jre 1.8 or jdk 1.8 anything will be work out so now you need a one machine where you are going to install the jre and jdk and after that you can install the jenkins so now i am going to show you from here onwards the demo okay so now i am going to need a machine so let's grab a machines now and machines i am going to get from the aws okay so now i have to log into my account here it is i am into the mumbai region i am going to grab one server quickly and i am going to do all these things in our chain machine and it's standard machine for the all the organization as well so launching one instance and i'll go to red hat linux 7.2 4g ram one instance is okay adding storage 30 gb adding tag security here it is and then launching and i don't know where i have i have a keys or not so what i will do i'll create a new one so let's create a weekend and download this key and launch so i got this machine up okay i'm waiting meanwhile i'll convert my ppk to uh, sorry pm to ppk using the partition so conversion import key we can dot pm and we can i got the ppk now i got the machine ip address by refreshing it here it is and this is the ip address which i got it and now i'm going to log in using putty so locate my ppk which i needed to access this the machine so let me make this screen a little bit better and bigger font so you can see it better here it is and now c2 hyphen user sudo hyphen s and wonderful now this is the machine i have logged in as a root everything i am supposed to do that and now i am going to install this jenkins so as per the discussions we have to install jre or jdk so i as i have decided i'll go the jdk so i have one articles complete java installation scm galaxy and s 
Similarly, yes, some typo. Yeah, here it is. And uh, this is just a quick guide. Okay, so I don't have to search here. And can get the command immediately. Oh, that is not getting loaded in this portal. So, can you please open this uh, article? Uh, yeah, can you open this? Uh, article because uh, from my browser there is some issues going on so I'll have to fix it so can you open this thing and tell me that yum command for the JDK 1.8 put it in the chat window so I can install it anyone go to that URL somewhere in the middle of the section you'll be having JDK 1.8 installation with the yum open JDK so just tell me the command Yeah. I got this command. Here it is the command which I am going to install it. Yum install open JDK and enter. Here it is. So I'm going to install JDK now. And it's asked for the confirmation. JDK install. So now I have just got the JDK installed. So almost done. Okay, so JDK stalls. So JDK hyphen V. I just verify you can see that uh, the version. So Java version 1.8.0. That is what I was needed. That's cool. So now I got this prerequisite done. Now I have to install the Jenkins. So Jenkins installation, there's a various ways in which you can install the Jenkins. Okay, so installation of the Jenkins instructions you can find on the Jenkins.io website. Okay, so this is the official website. So just if you click on the download section, okay, here you can see this uh, long term support LTS uh, Jenkins 2.6.0 and 2.7.0. So we have two releases which is going on. So uh, let's try with the latest one which is 2.71. Okay, now you can see that uh, depends on the platform, you can install the Jenkins. So if you're using Docker, you can go with this. If you're using Mac, you can go with this. If you're using Reddit, you should go with this. If you're using Windows also, you can go with this. But ultimately, you can install through WAR file also. So if you're running the Tomcat or JBoss or something, and if you don't want to install it from scratch, just download this WAR file, copy in the Tomcat directly, and automatically it will explode, and then you can get up. up Running. But right now I'm having Red Hat Linux, which is here. So I'll just click on Red Hat Linux. Okay, and now just you have to perform these two commands. And last one is that this is the third one. So the first command will add the Jenkins repository to your system. Okay, so Jenkins is located somewhere in the repository which is called pkg.jenkins.io. So I need to add this repository into the etcm.repos.t. So this command will automatically add it. So here it says this wget is not found. This server is very new to me because just I got it. So wget is one of the tool which is not available. So no, no worries, I can install it easily. yum install wget and it will get installed, okay? So now, I got W get installed, I just click. And now, I run the same command again, and now, I'm getting added the repository where the Jenkins is lying, and it got added to this location, which you can see that. Now, I have to add the keys of that repository also, using the second line of the command. I just ran it, and it's done. Now, third and last command, which is nothing but J yum install Jenkins. So I added the repository, I added the keys, and now I'm going to install the Jenkins. Okay, and it's saying confirmation. So now you see that's being downloaded. It will be very fast because I'm using AWS just because of the demo. Uh, it, we can save some time. If I do the same, all these steps in my local machine, it will be damn slow because internet is not that great. And that's one of the advantage using AWS for the demo. You can save lots of time. You know, can spend more on the tooling part and uh, learning how to do that rather than you know, installation, configurations, and sort of things. So one minute to go.
so it's almost done 94 percent 95 and completed so now I'll install the Jenkins so if you see this which Jenkins now you can see that it's not installed in the system path still but it's installed in the services so if you go system CTL start Jenkins or status Jenkins then it will come see here so now you see that if you type system CTL which is the Linux uh, RHL command to uh, find out which are the services which is registered with the system so this will tell you okay uh, here this installation is there you can see that installation is there but it's as of now inactive it's a dead so what are you going to do you're going to start the services so start the services Jenkins and cool now you can see the status and now earlier it was dead now you see that it's running okay so now system is running so now if you want to know which are the processes are uh, taking the Jenkins just type ps ef and pipe grape Jenkins and then you see that here these are the important information you should know so where is your Jenkins home so if you see this environment variable which is running your Jenkins home is var lead Jenkins so this is the place where the Jenkins is installed so where is a var file which is located in this location you have a var file located where is the log file which will be written this is the place where you have log file written which port it is running 8080 port is running okay so all these informations are important so now you have installed the Jenkins and you are running the Jenkins now you have to access the Jenkins for the access the Jenkins I just said it's running on 8080 port so just click on this and 8080 port and this is the page you will get it so not everyone can continue only those person who has the keys located at this location shall be allowed to continue so you should you shall go to this place and get the keys so i'll go to here clear the screen more i have got the keys that means i am the owner of these installations and i'll continue now the moment you click on the continue you will be asked with the two options and uh, here you will be asked like whether you want to install the plugins which is suggested by the Jenkins or you want to go with the no plugins but you want to install it depends on your requirement uh, as I said Jenkins is nothing without plugins and Jenkins is being empowered by the plugin so if you uh, you want to enjoy the Jenkins you have to install the plugin so for time being probably we will install the more plugins once we need it but we will go with the suggested plugin so that way we will get the basic plugins and the visualization will be much more strong okay but if you are at the expert side and you do want to install the, all the plugins and you know that what are the plugins you need it you can go with the second options also but as of now let's try with the install suggested plugins so just say click on it and now these are the plugins which will be installed in Jenkins right now so we install the Jenkins now we are config configuring with the plugins so it will be done in few seconds and you can see these are the plugins which is in progress is getting installed remember Jenkins is all about the plugins because if you want to add a, a functionality and if you want to add a new features you want to integrate the new tools the only solutions you have plugins you have to install the new plugins for that So it will be done in few seconds if meanwhile if anyone has any questions you may ask me so Rajesh uh, basically what all the tools uh, chef uh, maven and puppet can do Jenkins is the Jenkins is one one tool that can do all those tasks. Uh, so is that it? Jenkins is a kind of front end. So using Jenkins, you are going to call all these tools. So I'll I'll show you some of the demos, and then you can understand the. 
over a few. Jofna, I think there's some background noise coming from your side. Would you mind if you can mute yourself? So I have some problem. I wanted to ask a question, but uh, it's like a problem. Yeah. What is your question? Yeah, the question is like uh, recently I tried to install uh, Jenkins and installing the suggested plugins. So uh, by the time the plugins were getting installed, I got my uh, VM powered off. And then when I restarted, I was unable to install the plugin. It's always saying uh, uh, Jenkins instance is offline. And then I restarted it. But again, I got the same problem. And my plugins were never installed. I, it's always failing. So I'm not sure what is the problem. And I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, so what you can do? The approach is to stop the Jenkins services, okay, and uninstall the uh, Jenkins. So the command is, if you have followed my way, install that using an RGL. You can remove this yum remove Jenkins, and then you can install this and then follow the steps. Okay. Okay. I stopped the services and started, but I did not uninstall. I will try that. Yeah. So now. Uh, Installing suggested plugins, we have got a page where we can set up the admin user. So my admin user, let's put it admin. Password is admin123. Confirm password admin123. Full name is Rajesh Kumar. My email address is Rajesh at the rate of scmgalaxy.com and save and finish. Now have Installed and configured the Jenkins. So the first time whenever you got into the dashboard the Jenkins will look like this Okay, and now you have to start automating the thing. So now that, uh, what are you going to do here? So basically you're going to set up all these jobs Whatever we discussed because Jenkins is mean for doing all these things automated things, right? So whenever you start adding any project here Okay, any jobs here, sometimes you call it item, sometimes you call it jobs, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to do here, you have to follow the rules and we call it Jenkins rules. This rules, you have to remember on the Jenkins and creating the jobs. So now, the first rule, where is your source code okay here the source code it can be java it can be dot net it can be Perl, it can be ruby it can be python it can be chef it can be puppet it can be anything in a simple word okay it can be anything okay here it can be any source code I don't care, but it's asking is where is your source code? So where it can have the source code? So normally you'll have the source code in the source code management tool like a git, SVN, right? SVN, TFS, CVS, all the tools like this Perforce. So you are, you have a source code in any of these places, but the technology it can be anything. Now, second rule it says, what is your builder? So now, if you understand what is a builder, that means a build tool which can use to 
call this technology so if you if you are talking about java then you know that maven is a build tool which can be used it can be used with the ant also if you are talking about the dot net then it can be used for the ms build it can be used also in ant also if you are talking about the pol then pol is interpreter so there is no builders required so pol is required the pol itself if you are using the ruby ruby again you require ruby python again you require python chef you require what what, what is the builder you need it so chef required chef hyphen client again okay uh, puppet is also need something similar so basically you need to understand a tool which we may call it builder or interpreter or something like that which will be triggered to perform that kind of action on this technology so now you will figure it out okay what is your builder and third rule it says what is your compiler compiler and sometime interpreter inter Interpreter. Okay, so now you have to find out what is your interpreter. So if you talk about what is your Java uh, compiler interpreter, it's of course JDK, or right? If you are talking about the uh, .NET, so of course it's a .NET again. Okay, and if you are, need a Perl, Perl is an interpreter language, so you need a Perl installation. For the Ruby, you need to got the Ruby installation. So you need to know three rules before setting up any jobs. any jobs i'm talking about no matter whether you are setting a job for the build whether you are setting for the unit test cases whether you are setting for the repository whether you are setting for the anything like acceptance test and all you should know what exactly where is your source code where is what is your builder what is your compiler and interpreter this rule will be applicable for setting up to all the jobs so now so as part of the things let's set up let's set to job along with maven okay now second job java along with and and one more things so let's try dot net along with ms build this is the popular combination which we have to try so now let's me try so for one thing which i needed where is your source code so i have a one source code in the github.com so if i go to my github.com here it is and i have a one source code which is this is the source code okay let's use this one so right now i'm using java along with the so if you look at this source code here is the source code and here is the pom.xml so if you if you know that uh, what is a pom.xml and all this so already have discussed in the last week in classes so what is a maven and all so those who have forgotten please go to that recordings and just see that what is a maven and all so now this is the maven pom.xml this is the source code i have source code in git so now what we concluded as part of the discussion is like okay my source the rule as per the things where is the source code so the source code is in git it you can have a anywhere else so next is what is your builder so your builder is maven and next question is what is your compiler so of course this compiler is jdk in this case in terms of and you have your builder is and and compiler is jdk and in this case you have a source code in git and your builder is ms build and compiler is dot net so this is the three jobs i am going to set it up now okay so what i am going to do click on the my jenkins here i click on the create a new job okay and just i put it automated build and i will always go with a freestyle project click okay now there you will find the moment you click on the okay you will find so many options you have a five tabs general source code management build triggers build environments build post build actions so for each section each tab there is so many other options so you do not get lost in that 
okay we will talk about one by one slowly so here if you look at that my requirement is very simple the jenkins should be able to check out the source code from git so source code management tab where is the source code get what is the url this is the url and click on it here now i don't this the repository which is a public repository so i don't require the user id and password so i'm setting up my but if the private repository you have to set the user id and password to extract in this so now jenkins will clone this source code and keep it in the workspace that's one thing now i just save it and run it and it got failed so now you see that it got failed click on the build number one so you see that a build the workspace is this one and there's no files in it okay why there's no files in it because the build is failed build number one is failed if you click on the build number one and click on the log file which is called console output and you see that it has some error so if you look at this error if you read this error it says cannot run git so now you must be wondering okay you had a plugins called get you had selected but what is all about this cannot run git program so how it is uh, how jenkins works we need to understand little bit very carefully so now what is happening jenkins is acting like a broker okay so jenkins is acting like a broker so now what you need to do in order to build that job the flow is like this okay flow if you do the manual manual things so first step 1 check git clone url okay second thing is maven compile if you remember that how the maven works and then for running the git clone first thing you have to do install git right to running the maven command what you have to do install maven and then you can do this third action which is git clone url to get the source code and fourth mbn compile to run so these are the four activities you if you want if i ask you to compile the source code which is maven then you have to do this four acts this all this four action is been done by the jenkins okay so now jenkins if jenkins is doing all this manual activities then we have to do install jenkins where you have to install jenkins so you have to install the jenkins in the server where you have the system so here sorry in install git so now do you see the in the system there is no git so that is the reason you got the problem here git is cannot run program git what is trying to do is so if you look at this program and here if you look at this command line what is trying to do is trying to do git init this one this command is trying to run okay is trying to run this command okay cloning the repository so here is trying to clone this repository which is nothing but which is here but it failed why because to run the git command you need to have a git install in the server but git is not there okay so you can see this which git this no git so what you going to do you going to run this yum install git and now you install the git and now if you see that which git you got this git bin git so now install git is there so now if you run this command uh, this job one more time after this installing it and now it has checked out you can see that successful the message success now it did get uh, source code click on the workspace now you got the source directory pom.xml is whatever you had it here in source code so now what has happened the flow is like this very simple to understand every time the flow will like this jenkins is a dumb tool jenkins is a dumb tool okay so it is knowing nothing so what you do install the plugins 
So in this case, we install the Git plugin, which was already installed as part of the initial configuration. Remember, I installed the suggested plugin. So that process installed the Git plugin. So this plugin, whenever you install the Git plugin, this plugin is not installing software, installing the commands. Okay, commands. That means the moment you install the Git plugins, Jenkins got all the Git commands. So now Jenkins has all the Git commands. So one of the commands which you require to get the source code is Git clone URL. So now the moment you put it here, URL, let me configure the jobs again and source code. The moment you put the URL and save it, now Jenkins is trying to clone that URL and trying to copy the source code into the workspace, which is here. Okay, but the commands are there, get clone, but the executables are not there where it can run. So now you have to install the ex executable. So at the moment you install the executables, now you have the executables, you have a command, Jenkins just ran it. That's all. So Jenkins has done the, the steps which you normally do manually installing the Jenkins and then get clone URL to get the source code. Okay, so now it's been done by the Jenkins. So same thing which we are doing manually, got it done by Jenkins. It understood, is it clear, the concepts? Any confusion? Clear? Uh, uh, Rajesh, uh, I'm lost uh, for, uh, for one or two minutes because of my internet uh, got lost. So uh, when you got the error, you installed the Git plugin, right? So to get the build success. I installed the Git software because the moment you install, you install the Git plugins, Git plugins has the commands, all the Git commands, but Git commands required an executable to run it. So executables were not there in the system. So I installed the Git here in the system. So now Jenkins can run the Git commands, which is there in the Git plugins, with the help of executables and check out the source code which is required in the workspace and we got the source code. Is that understood? Make sense? Jotsna? Hello? Setu, are you there? Yes, I am here. So I have not done anything related to Malware. Okay, I am just uh, doing that only Jenkins. Uh, only Git. So now I am getting the source code from the Git. I got it. Now what next? So I have got the source code. Okay. I have got the source code here. Now what next? So I have to build it. I have to compile it, right? So for the compilation, what I'm going to do, going to the configuration. So source code management is done. Just skip it the build triggers, skip the build environment and go directly to the build tab. Okay, we'll talk about the build triggers and environment later. Okay, so now we'll go to the build tab and what do you want to do? If you want to compile the, the, the source code using the map and then what is the code you're going to call? So now if you see that the build section, which is the build tab, okay, you will find the lots of compiler. You can execute the Windows batch command, you can execute the cell, you can execute the ant, you can execute the gradle, you can execute the map and all. So basically all these options, how can you got it? Because we store the suggested plugins. If your options are not there, let's say MS builds are not there, you have to install the plugins and we will do that. So now what you're going to do, you, you got the things, where is your source code, it's in gear, so I got checked it out. Now where is your builder, so it's in Maven, so you have to select the Maven, which is a builder. And now what is the goal you have to select? You have to select the goal, which is compile, because to compile the source code, you have to just to select the goal name, compile, and save it, and build it. And now again it got failed. So now you have to look at the error, console output, check.
checkout happened very successfully but the moment it ran the maven compile that's a command then it says cannot run program and maven so again you remember the same concept same concept maven plugin you install with the jenkins then you got the all the commands but maven compile deemed executable which is called maven need to be set in an environment variable but maven is not set if you look at this here and if you type maven you see that maven command is not found maven is not installing the software so last time how did i install i install using yum install map it get right like this but this is the system installation one of the way to install it but this time what i am going to do i am going to use jenkins as a installing platform so using jenkins also you can install any number of tools so i install the git through system but i am going to install the maven executable through the jenkins so click on the jenkins manage jenkins okay manage jenkins all the administration sections will come so here you have to look for the, this option global tool configuration where it says you can configure the tools their location are automatically installed so now i am going to install the maven so click on the global tool configuration and now look for this what is the maven section so jdk section is there git section is there gradle section is there and section is there maven section is here now i can install the maven using add maven name of the maven is maven 1 okay and now you have two option either you want to install manually then give the path here wherever you have copied the maven directories but if you want jenkins to use as a installer so click on the install automatically select the Jen uh, maven install version which you want to install and automatically jenkins will download from the apache website and save it and now you go back to jenkins build maven Again, it's failed. If you look at the console output, it's the same error. It says Maven cannot run the program Maven. Why? So basically, you will have configured the Maven in the Manage Jenkins global tool configuration, and which is here. You have configured it here, but you are not telling your jobs to use it that Maven. So what you have to do? You have to go to the configuration, and the moment you add the Maven in the backend. you will get the option enabled which is like a, which maven version you want to use it so here you have a one because i did set it up one so you got it one save and now if you build now there is no problem console output check out as happen now maven is trying to build it okay it will take few minutes and it will be built so now any questions so far any question so far no okay so now you see that these questions are very important where is your source code what is your builder what is your compiler and every time let me tell you maven works like a broker maven works like a broker so maven needs all the tools configured in order to sorry jenkins work like a broker jenkins required all the tools to be configured and then only jenkins will call everything so in a nutshell jenkins is doing nothing jenkins is calling git to check out jenkins is calling maven to call that compile maven will compile and things like that so similarly Jenkins will do nothing, but it will call everything. So that's the reason I said Jenkins is a front end. From the back end, it call Maven, JUnit, R, Nexus, Chef Puppet, Selenium, Jacobo, and Sonar Cube Code to do everything. But from the front end, it look like everything is being done by Jenkins. Now you see that it should be over, but let me check it out. What is the problem? Here we have 
have some error. So the problem is like a compilation error. So what is the problem? It says no compiler is provided in this environment. Perhaps you are running GRE rather than JDK. So this uh, issues I was uh, uh, doubting because the moment you share this one, which is open JDK, this one, I was doubting probably this is having not the proper JDK. This is the one which I installed last time. So it's probably is not having open JDK. So that's the reason. It's it's it says you have a not JDK, it's a JRE. Perhaps you are running a JRE or something like that. Okay, so this is the error. So what do you have to do? Now you have to set up the JDK. So let me set up the JDK. So yum, let me verify first. Java version. And here it says open JDK version, this one. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to set up a Java. So how can you do that? So uh, this one uh, download location, which you can find in the same page. Can you please give it to me? Uh, that's starting with a wget, Java 1.8. Can you give it to me the command, same page? Anyone? Yeah, so now I got this command from the same page which I'm using right now. And this command is this one. So basically it is to what worked just like that because this URL has been changed, okay? This URL has been changed. To, to get the new URL, I'll go to the Oracle website, Oracle down JDK 1.8. And here I accept this. Now what is my, my platform? My platform is uh, Linux 64 bit, which is here. So I will get this one or I am looking for the tarball, which is this one. So copy. This is the latest file. I'll just replace with it. That's all. And this cookies has to be there. Otherwise, this cookies means you are accepting the certificates, okay? So now I will go here and now I will go to the OPT location. Okay. And here I will download the package. And now you can see that it's downloading the packages. It will be done in one minute, 40 seconds. So meanwhile, you can ask any questions if you have it. Hi Rajesh, I have a question. Uh, about the uh, and SSH directly into the instance. Hello. Hello. What is your question? The question is, uh, you're using a AWS instance. What is the difference between SSHing directly into the instance and accessing the instance using Putty? I mean, why don't you directly SSH into the instance? Okay, it's like this. Uh, it's like this. Uh, if you are doing SSH, SSH is a protocol, okay? Protocol. Using that, you connect to the Linux machine, okay? Now, RDP is a working protocol, okay? Protocol, which you can use that with the window. Now, the problem is Windows is not having SSS protocol, okay? SSS yeah. 
Well, so you can connect to LAN windows. You, you can connect to the LAN. Sorry, from the windows, you do not can you cannot connect to the uh, LAN. That's why because there is no SSH in Windows. What do you have? Windows IP. So what you have to do if you want to connect from Windows, then what you have to do going installing the Putty. So Putty, what they do? They get the SSH client. SSH client. Okay, and now you can connect to the Linux. So as Putty will help you to get this protocol from the Windows, so you can connect to the Linux. So now if you, if I show you here, if you click on the Putty, you see that SSH. This is the protocol which you are using, and then putting the IP address, port number 22, and getting into that. So if you try different protocol which is like root, telnet, R login, and all, it will not work. You will not be able to connect to it. Mm -hmm. uh, to that. So, is that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, okay. So, now what we have done, I have got this Java installed, downloaded, and this is the one of the another way to uh, uh, Jenk, uh, install with the Jenkins. So, now let me tell you Jenkins' way to install. So, first, what I did, I'll tell you. First, I, first approach I did yum install git. This is the system installation. Okay, so this is the system installation. That means you can have maximum one version of the git using this way. So second way what I did, I installed using Jenkins. And what I installed using Jenkins, Maven I installed using Jenkins. So, but here, if you install through the Maven, then you can also have multiple Maven. So let me show you here. Let's say, uh, go to the Manage Jenkins Global Tool Configuration and let's name properly because I, I did not give this. The version which I'm installing 3.5.0, so let's give 3.5.0. Okay, and now select C. Now you want to install one more version. So what you have to do, go and add Maven, and this time you select the version different, 3.3.1. So now you select 3.3.1. So now save it. So you got the two Maven version. So if some developer is asking, no, my program will run with the Maven, uh, uh, Maven uh, 3.5. Or some programmers will say, no, I'll run with the Maven 3, 3.1. So you can select it. But the, the moment you install through the system command, then you have only one. That's a drawback. So here you can use it. There's a third, uh, two ways. So you can install Maven. But, so what we discussed, one is a system installation. Uh, you, you are installing one using system commands. You are installing one using the Jenkins. And the third way, you can install manually. Okay, manually using Jenkins. And here, automatic using Jenkins. So this time, Maven I installed automated way. Okay, go to the Jenkins, manage Jenkins, global tool configuration, and this I tried Maven installing automated way. You see they install automatically, here install automatically, but this time the, the Java which I'm trying, I'm trying to set it up manually through Jenkins. So what I'm going to do, I've downloaded this package, I'm going to tar ZXBF to untar it. I got this Java, it's a JDK, okay, which I needed. And now this is the location of my Java home. So what is the location? This is the location. So now I'm going to set up Java here. Add JDK, JDK 1.8. And here again you have installed automatically, but I'm not going to try for that because I tried with the Maven already, I showed you. This time, set it up manually. Okay, you can set it up as many you want. You want to add more, 1.7, 1.5, 1.4, 1.3, any number of Java you can set it up. Okay, and just set it up and save. And now, if you go and build now, again it has some problem. This time Maven, I changed the Maven names, that's the reason it changed the thing, so I have to 
change the stuff, go to the build, change the name which is 3.5.0 and wait now. And now see that it's unpacking, everything is happening from again and things like that. And now success. So now Java is issues also resolved. So now you saw that how can you play with this your source code? Yes, you can play with the builder, you can play with the compilers and things like that and in the Jenkins. Is it understood? Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Okay, so now what I am going to do, I am going to set up one more job and this time I am going to do the AND because last time I did the build of the Java with the Maven, this time Java with AND builder. So let's do that quickly, new item, I will name it the job name AND, freestyle, okay. Now as per the rule, where is my source code, is in git, but where is this in git, click on SCM Galaxy, I have a sample project already created here and that is called and and here this is the project I just selected URL there is no credentials required and go to the build option now in the build section you select what is your builder so my builder is and now in the and what is the target name so you have a build.xml which is here and the target name which you want to call clean create compile package so I want to call the target name compile just put in the compile, save it and build now. So now this time you will not get the git issues because I already installed it in the last job. So you will not get the git issues. So you got the checkout, you can see the checkout happen. But this time you got the and issues. And is compile. The moment you run the command and, it says the and installation is not there. So what do you have to do? You know that very well. Go to the Jenkins. Go to the Manage Jenkins. Global tool configuration where you set it to all the tools. Go to and try to find out the and. Click here and name it and and which one you want to install? 1.10. So let's put it 1.10 and automatically install, save it. And Jenkins, you have to select here configuration and select the which and you want to use it. This is the one. Save it, build now. And now builder is set with a job. Everything, whatever you do manually, you have to set to the Jenkins. Now you got the checkout, your build is happening, build is successful. If you want to verify the build is successful or not, click workspace and now see here, you had a only source code which is like source directory and build.txt and readme.txt. You created the bin, under the bin you have a class file that is your compile, I mean compiled code. So this is the way you automated the hand also. Very simple, right? So now you can understand this rule applies everywhere. Where is your source code? Which is your builder? What is your compiler or interpreter? Whatever it is. And no matter what you are calling, Java, .NET, Ruby, Perl, Python, C, Puppet, Selenium, anything, you follow this rule. Am I clear? Any questions on this? Any questions for this? Uh, Rajesh, one question. Yeah, uh, hello. Yeah, tell me. Uh, Git, you have installed it uh, manually, right? Like system installation, we did it, right? Uh, that also we can do it through Jenkins? Yes, yes, we can do it through Jenkins. Everything can be done through Jenkins. So here you can go to the uh, Jenkins, global tool configuration, and here you see the script. You can go ahead and install automatically, locate the path, or if you have copied somewhere in the list, just like I did copy under the OPT directory, you can see that of the git and give the git like this, git, and then you can go ahead with it like this. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now we just need a git here. Why? Because I just set it up in the system command. So it's accepting. Make sense? Correct. Yes. Any other questions? 
One more thing, uh, important things I want to tell you. All these tools, whatever it is, get, Gradle, Ant, Maven, Docker. Why? Because you can, you have installed the plugins while configuring it. Okay, so if you are not seeing the, some of the tools which you have, which you may, might need it, that means those plugins are not installed. Like MSBuild is not there, so you have to install MSBuild. So now, remember, I have compiled and set it up the job for the Maven, I did for the AMP, now we have to do the MSBuild. But the problem here is, this server which we have in the Windows, oh sorry, Linux. So MSBuild will work in the Windows. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So the thing is, what you're going to do is you are going to outsource the jobs to Windows. Okay, you are going to outsource the job in Windows using the concept called nodes, and in another way we call it slaves. So manage Jenkins, and here you, there's one option called manage nodes. And here you're going to add the Windows nodes, Linux node, Ubuntu nodes, Mac nodes, whatever the nodes you want to add it, you can do that. And you can outsource the job compilation or whatever it is to the different nodes. How can it be done? I'll show you in a summary. But I'm just keeping this question on the hold. So now what I'm going to do, I did the build. Okay. Now let me do the quickly UT packaging and all the stuff like that. Okay, so now new item and this automated UT. Okay, and this time I'm not going to create it from the scratch, rather than I'm going to take it from this A build. I'm going to copy from the existing build, which is from copy from A build, and click OK. All the configurations I'll get it as it is because we save some time. The only thing which you have to change is from the build compile go to the test group. Save it. Build now. And this build is in progress. You can see this console output. Testing is happening. And now <coughs> it's been done. You can see the log file. It's in progress. So this is the power of the builder. So basically Jenkins is doing nothing but changing the goals. So that everything has been done by the Maven, but you are just playing with the goals. You know, so just you change the goal and then testing has happened. So if you want to check it out, the workspace, here you have a target directory, here you have a surf files. This is the reports and this is the compile code, which is the test code. Right? So now, you got this unit testing done, but here is the thing. You want to know the dashboard of the unit test results, which is not there. You cannot see it here, right? You cannot see it. So what are you going to do? So go to the configuration. Go to the build, push build action, because you want to show the, the dashboard of the reports also, because you cannot see. You can see these reports by clicking on the in this one, control output, and go to the bottom section of the page, and then logs, you can see that, okay, how many tests run? One, failure zero, error zero, skip zero. But this is not the user friendly. You want the, all this information, how many tests were passed, somewhere here. So what you want to do, very simple, configuration, post build action, and there is one plugin for you which got installed along with which is called published JUnit test results. Let me tell you, any things which is not there, you can go ahead and find out plugins for that. Because I just said, thousands of plugins are there. So right now my requirement is very simple. I want to publish the JUnit test results on the dashboard. Okay, just a click on it. And now it's required the test report XML location. And this is the one of the locations. So where is my location? So I will click on the new tab. Click on the workspace, target, and this is the location where I have XML file. This is the file I'm talking about. So this is the path. I just copy the path and put it, just remove this black space and all kind of things. Okay. And now you have to put this star.xml so that way it will take it up and save it. Now build now one more time. And will happen. 
and now you see that i just refresh the page manually and then you hear here you have latest test results which you were not earlier now click on this and now you see that this is the dashboard you got the zero failures one millisecond these are the things which you have so this is a small project if you are not bigger project you can see this all stuff you can see the history of the test results you can see the test results everything is perfectly fine so you have so many other things you will get the more richer dashboard so am i making sense now am i making sense now see that more you build more you get this okay so now we did as per the discussions what we did we did the automated build we did the automated unit test cases now we'll have to do the packaging so we have to do nothing but create a new item a p c k automated packaging i'm not going to use the freestyle because i'm going to copy from this and just i'm going to change okay build and just change this from the compile uh, to package and save it and build now and packaging it's happening so simple right automating understanding using the jenkins playing with the goose or target with the ant or anything else is so simple right just you have to have uh, everything ready and just plug in with the jenkins so rajesh uh, have you given the goal as package yeah. I, i didn't see it. i i missed it okay yeah i given this goal you can see this here build here is package Okay all right So now packaging is done so now you can see that's a whole lot of automations you are doing so now what you have to do you have to deploy to prep so simple i wanted to build the the project so i got to the source code uh, check out from the gate and uh, builder with the help of the maven we built it now we did the gmini test case testing packaging using the jar now you want to deploy to the repo so which repo you want to deploy so we here we are talking about the nexus okay so now we need to have a nexus server to be there in order to deploy to the repo meanwhile we have one question so let me see that so josephine is asking can we compile test packaging to in one job itself instead of creating different job for the each task what is the best practice in the real time scenario yes just now you can do that so if you want to do everything in one job it can be possible so what you have to do you have to go to the ia build configuration and build section and here you can see you are compiling right you are checking the compile you can directly call the last one which is install So everything will be done. But if you want to do one by one, you can also add one more uh, Maven target here. You say uh, compile test, but you are not doing it. Why? Because every time you want to do the compilation separately, co-packaging separately, deployment separately. So whenever you need this kind of job to run in a in the in an independent manner, so you can run it. but same time you have to link all these jobs so it can happen at one go also so there is a way for that okay so i'm and you can do that it's possible but we are not doing it why because let's say your compilation required 2 hours package is requiring half an hour deployment requires 1 hour testing required 3 hours so to complete all the jobs you require say 7 hours in a real time environment so you don't want to do everything or every time it's let's say you want to just uh, uh, test the source code committed in the source code in the git just you want to compile then you going to want to get the immediate feedback so in that case why you want to spend 6 7 hours unnecessarily so there is a flexibility you can do one job or you can do all this job so it's up to you am i making sense to you now okay so now what we did packaging is also successful if you click on the workspace here now you see the target and we got the packages but this packages has to be deployed to the nexus so i don't know whether i did the training for you the nexus or not let me see that nexus training is which is next which is tomorrow but no problem 
what i will do i will set it up quickly and tomorrow i will do that in the details okay so now what i am going to do for the nexus you because you want to deploy to the nexus so first thing what you have to do you have to set up the nexus server second thing you have to do pom.xml modification modification and third thing which you have to do setting up xml modification and then the goal which will deploy is this one so this is the step so what i will do this steps i will skip it why because there is a any ways i'm trying tomorrow okay so i will skip it this job now what is the next thing so next thing is as part of our discussion is deploy to qa so uh, what can you deploy so next uh, remember uh, in the uh, chef class what i used to do i used to call a chef client a sorry knife which is a chef to deploy the server so knife command so now what do you want to do you want to create one job and i'll create a dummy job okay let's say accept and deploy let's create one dummy job to the repo freestyle okay and in this command here you are going to pass this let's say dummy script i'm just putting it here this time linux deploy to repo.sh okay and then done this is a dummy job i just created it and it should be success and now i'm going to create one more dummy job a deploy to qa server and this time okay and in the build section i'm going to call shell scripting knife command i'm just commenting okay knife command and you know that what is a knife command okay so knife command you want to call so automatically deploy will happen and finally you want to create one more job accept and testing and this time you are going to call the job which is comment and putting so it will not fail and uh, uh, test test dot ss or which will each might call selenium which might call this which might call qtp or anything so now you got so many jobs let me trigger it because i just commented it will not fail that so just for the demo purpose now you saw that you got this all these things done so you got this uh uh build ut packaging deploy to repo deploy to qa accept testings everything is done now what you have to do you have to link together all these jobs has to be linked together so for what what are you going to do so what you know you know that after the a build you should call the unit uh, ut which is here so i'll go to the a build configuration post build action and uh, here i have to do the post build action so here i go to this build other project and i will call a u t save it refresh it that means after the a build is getting successfully completed it should automatically call u t okay it should automatically load so now let me verify a build is the most recent build is 7 a u t is the most recent build is 3 So let me trigger it and verify. I got eight, and now it's pending four. And you see, it's pending. It will be done in a few seconds. It's got progress, and now it's finished. So that means it's working. So now that means the moment I trigger a build, a build will complete, and then it will call the ut. So as per the logic. what it should be done as per the logic after the ut should call packaging so let's do that after the ut downstream project will be packaging so configure post build action build other project and what is this job a pack save it refresh it downstream project got updated with a pack after the a pack it should call to deploy to repo so just click on the a pack configure it post build action build other project a deploy to repo save it 
refresh it after the deploy to repo you should call to deploy to QA so click on it configuration post build action deploy build other projects deploy to QA which is here ok now save it refresh it after the deploy to QA you should call the acceptance testings so configuration post build action build other project and acceptance testing which is here and now save it and now the moment you see all these things are dependent that means the moment I call A build it will automatically finish and you call AT after UD after UD it will call packaging after the packaging it will call to deploy to repo after deploy to repo deploy to QA after deploy to QA to AT and like that so all these things so if I trigger one okay if I trigger uh, build job automatically it will keep on trailing the remaining dependent job you can see this build executor status here and now i'll refresh it enable the auto refresh so that may automatically you see this ut is in progress under the build executor status now packaging is in progress Now, QA is in queue, automatically it will be taken in the executor in few seconds. In the next refresh, because I just enabled the auto refresh, automatically it will, it's done, A8 is in progress. Now you see that, so everything is dependent. Okay, now the visualization is not there, so you want to have a nice dashboard for that. Nice dashboard. So now, this is called the whole CI process that means if you call one automatically it will be taken all this thing so now this process we we call it DevOps or CI pipeline CI pipeline continuous integration pipeline continuous integration pipeline so now you want that visualization because feedback has to be there you want to see that status and all and this is not user friendly so what you going to do you're going to create a pipeline using the plugin name which is called build pipeline so this is one of the, my favorite uh, plugin to create a dashboard for the pipeline but you have uh, so many plugins you can install try it out and different different sort of plugins as well but one of this my favorite plugin is build pipeline so click on the manage plugins so if you want to install uninstall upgrade any plugins you have to come to the manage jenkins and there's an option which is called manage plugin right so here you can see this add remove disable enable plugins that you can use it so remember the plugins is everything in the jenkins just click on the manage jenkins and here you have a four tab updates that means do you have any updates available as of now none available tabs which says like this many plugins you have available for the installation install tab which will talk about the number of installed plugins which you have it and advanced tab that means if you have a proxy configuration or you want to install the plugins manually then you can do that so i am going to the available tab and look for the filter and then search for the build pipeline which is my favorite plugins this will create a visualization so this plugins i am going to install it and now it says this plugin build pipeline plugin which you can see that is dependent on these many plugins actually so dependent plugins are also being installed okay one by one Now build pipeline plugin installed. Now I go to click on the Jenkins. And now where do you find it? So basically this is plus button. Can you see that here? My cursor plus button. Just click on the plus button after the all. Okay. And click on here. And now you see this build pipeline view. So now I am going to create continuous integration pipeline. Just again.
Yeah, so I'm just going to create a pipeline which is called continuous integration pipeline and now click on the OK and now here you have to select what is the description so let's give some description what is the title so let's give the same title what is the initial job which you want to display so the uh, which you want to call of course my initial job is a build okay and after that you have to go with the default option how many number of display job you want it let's make it five the many things let it be default and click okay and now you see that this is your dashboard. That means what exactly is happening, where is failing, where is passing, which is in progress, which is completed, everything you can see on this dashboard. And this URL you can present somewhere in the, your workspace over the some big big, uh, big, big uh, monitor and everyone will know whether some build is in progress, UT, packaging, deployed to report, deployed to QA, accepting test, any other things. You just run only once and it will be taken as it is. So this is the way you set up the jobs and this is the way you set up the all this stuff and create a relationship. Any questions so far on the pipeline front and creating the dependent jobs and things like that? Uh, yeah, Rajesh, I have a question. How can we install the plugins manually in Jenkins? How can you install the plugins? There's a, there's yeah, plugins. Yeah, so first thing you get a plugins which you want to install manually. So you get a package, okay, and the package name, uh, the, which will be starting. So you have to go to the Jenkins, manage Jenkins, manage plugins, advanced tab, and then here you see this upload plugins. Here you can see this, you have to find out this file, okay, HPI. So you, you have a HPI file which is nothing but your plugins. So just locate the file and it will get installed simple so the important things you have to find your plugins hpi file make sense okay it's a hudson file yeah it's a uh, okay. File. okay all right thanks any other questions Okay, so now I have shown you how can you play with this, uh, you know, uh, um, jobs, create n number of jobs, create dependency, create a dashboards and things like that. Now, I am going to show you some of the things like how can you, how can you integrate with SonarQ. SonarQ is a static code analysis tool, right? Which I think I did the training already last to last week, Sonar Cube. So how can you integrate with it? So simple, how can you integrate with Sonar Cube and Jenkins? That's the first question. Now I'm talking about the integration, okay? So till now, Jenkins got integrated with Git very efficiently, got Git with Maven very efficiently, with the, uh, with the, with the, with the, with the Ant very efficiently. Now let's integrate Jenkins with the Sonar Cube. Let's integrate Jenkins with uh, uh, Jacoco. Let's integrate Jenkins with Jira. Okay. Jira and all of the stuff. Right? So, how can you do that? So, let me put it like this. Sonar Cube integration, you need a Sonar Cube server. So, I am going to install the Sonar Cube server. Very simple. Go to the Sonar Cube download. Java is already installed, so I don't have to install. And this is the most latest one, 6.4. Uh -oh, I don't want to install it. I download it here in Windows. So I just copy the URL. And as you know that everything I am doing in the OPT directory. Get it here. Double get. I will download this one. It will take few seconds. Here it is. Sonar Cube Anjit. Anjit is not there. No problem. I will install it. Anjit. Yes. Now clear the screen. I'm zipping that Sonar Cube. I got it. Here it is the Sonar Cube. 
folder and I am going to bin directory and I am going to start it. So this is my operating system. This is my operating system and sonar dot sl start. So now if you start it, now it's running on 9000 port if I'm not wrong. So I'll go to this place and 9000 here. So this is your sonar cube which you have it. So now this sonar cube server you got it. Okay, let it get started. But how can you integrate with the Jenkins? So for the integration, as you know that you have to install the plugins. So these plugins by default you could not get it. So you have to go to manage Jenkins. Okay, manage plugins available tab where you have the, all the available plugins. Search the sonar cube. And here is the plugins which you need it sonar cube scanner for Jenkins. Click on it and it's getting installed. And the moment it got installed, remember there is a concept, I don't know whether you remember or not. For the integration of the Jenkins with the sonar cube, you need few things. Sonar cube server, that's important. Sonar cube scanner. Okay, and then source code. Okay, those who want to remind the sonar cube stuff, please go with the recordings. Okay, so this is the information. So sonar cube server, I got it. Okay, scanner. So a scanner, I have to install it. So I have, I'll just install the plugins automatically. I got it. So scanner, I got it. But I need to configure it. So let's do that. So sonar cube server, I got it. Scanner plugins, I installed it. And source code, I will get it through Jenkins. I'll get. Okay, no problem. So first thing. Sonar Q server, I have got it, but configuration I have to do with the Jenkins. So, where can I do that? Jenkins, manage Jenkins, and this is the configuration settings. We have to do the add that which is your Sonar Q server. So, click on the configuration, configuration system. Look for the Sonar Q server. So, here you have it Sonar Q server. The moment you install the plugins, you got this one, otherwise, you won't get it. So, you have to install the plugins. So, add Sonar Q server. You can add as many Sonar Q servers. So, Sonar Q 1. Okay. What is the URL? So, this is the URL, right? This is the URL. Now, you need to find out authentication token. So, where you can get it? So, log in to the Sonar Q server. ADMIN, ADMIN and click on the account which is here my accounts security and create a token for Jenkins create a token and just put this token here and then save it so your sonar cube plugins installed configuration done with this now you have to configure the scanner you need to tell the Jenkins where is your scanner so for this again manage Jenkins and manage tool configuration. So scanner is a tool, okay? And then locate the scanner, which is here, sonar Q scanner. Add the scanner, name that scanner when you think. Let it get it automatically installed. It will take it from the sonar Q server uh, website and automatically Jenkins will install. Done. So you got this sonar Q setup done with the Jenkins scanner. Then now you need a source code. So now let me grab the source code from Git. Because all of your source code, you keep it in the gate, right? So now I'm going to repository and I'm looking for the sonar cube server. Here it is. Remember, this is the property file which you need it. Again, you might want to remind yourself about the sonar cube training. And now go into Jenkins, new item, and this is the sonar cube freestyle. Okay. Where is the source code? Is in Git. Put the URL, go to the build section, and then add the sonar cube. So here you should be having sonar cube. Here is execute sonar cube. Remember earlier this option was not there. The moment you install the plugin, you got this option. Now execute that. If you have some customization, you can fill this form, but as of now it's not needed. Save it. Now this, this link is not active. Let's build once. It's a small project, it will be done in a few seconds. Done. And now this link code, it become active. Now you can see the source code integrations on this. 
zero bug, zero validity, but one hour of the work date, food code smell, 48% duplicate code, and that, 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 all this stuff. So this is the way you can integrate Sonar Q with Jenkins. Any questions so far? Yeah, Rajesh, um, um, I've seen that in the, um, the source code, you have mentioned some Sonar properties, right, in the GitHub. Uh, can you go to the GitHub once? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you, okay, what is the project name? Okay, uh, how come um, the Sonar Cube take all these properties from here? Okay, how come Sonar Cube takes, so let me tell you, Sonar Cube, is not taking this property. Your scanner is taking this property. Okay? If you remember from the my okay. discussion, because uh, I remember I did a session for you. So just remember how it is happening. This is a Sonar Q server. It has nothing to do about it. It is a dump actually. It is like a kind of place where you keep all the analytics. Okay? So basically this is a source code. So who's reading? Scanner, okay. Scanner is reading the source code and reading the property file, get the rules from the server and apply the rules on the source code, generate the reports, put it back to the server and that is what is getting displayed. Remember? So in that case, we can give this analysis properties, uh, sorry, this sonar properties in Jenkins configuration, right? In the analysis properties. Instead, instead of giving here, uh, we can give these properties in the Jenkins configuration itself, right? Yes. Yeah, so the analysis section. Yeah. All right. You see that to server configuration and this property I have added right here. The moment I add the execute sonar to scanner, automatically it reads the properties file. Okay. Automatically it reads the default properties. File. Yeah, so, yeah, but uh, I was asking that can we put these properties here in analysis properties because Yes, yes, you can give it the name here. You can put this this file name here also See path to project properties If you have uh, some different Jenkins, right? a different path then you can put it, but not put it. Why? Because everything I put it yeah. here was a default so that means by the default scanner will look for that. It's like this. Maven will look for the default prompt XML and will look for the uh, builder XML. MS Builder will look for the default MS Builder XML. So similarly, Sonar scanner is looking for this file. This file. But if it is a different file name, you have to specify here. Make sense? Am I making sense? Hello. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Other questions? Yeah, uh, Rajesh. One question. Yeah. Uh, so, so we we need to create a separate job for this static code analysis, right? Yes, you have to. You have to have one job separately created for static code analysis. And we need to uh, chain this uh, job as well, right? With the other jobs. Yeah, so now you have to do like Sonar Q I created. I'll go to the configuration and after the Sonar Q, remember that as per the discussion, Sonar Q was the first. Study Konans is first. So what I will do, I'll go to post build action and here I will call the build other projects. And now as part of the build other project, automated build here, save it, done. So now refresh it. So now the as part of the dashboard. As of now, it's calling build. I will configure it and I will call the initial job Sonar Q. So now this will be much more cleaner. Okay. Uh, so uh, I got to know that there is a plugin for GitHub as well, GitHub with the Sonar Cube, right? So uh, how does that work? Like we need to integrate Sonar Cube with the GitHub. Ah uh, yes, uh, GitHub. Uh, okay, that's a different thing. So either either you are using GitHub or Enterprise or GitLab Enterprise or Bitbucket or Gerrit. So all this has an inbuilt plugin. So the moment you commit the source code, automatically analysis will be done and it will be published on the Sonar Cube dashboard, which is here. So that's a different thing. But today we are doing learning Sonar. Uh, today we are learning Jenkins, not uh, GitHub. 
correct but either way we can do it right code coverage can be done either through github plugin or there or by triggering a new job in the uh, jenkins right either way we can do it no yes yes it's not a code coverage again i'm repeating static code analysis code coverage and static code analysis that's what yeah uh, the, that's what the static code analysis can be done either by either through github or through jenkins anything we can do it right or is there, which one is the most uh, preferable one in this case up to you either you want to do static code analysis through eclipse editor only editor eclipse jetbrains or uh, .net uh, like visual studio or you want to do that uh, on the source code management tool like scm system like github gitlab uh, bitbucket and all or either you can do through jenkins integration stuff like that's up to you Which which way you want? Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, got it. Okay, so now what we did? Okay, we we are going to we did static analysis. We did the build. We did packaging this thing. So now uh, I was talking about next thing is a Jaco code code coverage. Okay, that means the percentage of the testing has been completed on that particular job. So I want to integrate Jenkins with one of the code coverage tool that is called popular, which is popular Jaco code. So Jaco code. is will be called only after the testing remember only after the acceptance testing so what i have done i have created one sample project which is here jacoco here this is a sample project which i created pom.xml if you put it here you you see that all this plugins have installed in this here itself pom.xml so everything will be done by the man and you don't have to do anything so now what i have to do in order to integrate jenkins with jacoco first thing you have to do install the plugins so manage plugins available tab jacoco here it is Install the plugins. Now the rules will apply, and the rules are the same. Remember, where is your source code? Where is your builder? Where is your interpreter or compiler? So these rules, like I'll go to this one, and I'll name it this one CC Code Coverage, and Freestyle OK, and where is the source code? So it's there in this location. Okay, so I got this. Now, what is your uh, builder? So builder is Jaco code. So where is the which one you should call? So you should call the test first. Before the code coverage, you have to do the testing. So I will do this testing using this Maven, and after that, you are going to call the code coverage. So I can see that here you don't have that option, right? So no problem. You can find this option after the testing in the post build action. Okay. So now here post build action. Now you see that published records Jaco ko. Yeah, here it is. You can see that. So basically, code coverage will be done only after the test cases is been created. Test results has been created. So record code coverage, and this is a location I don't have to update it. Why? Because I created this project based on the default location. Okay, that means it will be taken care of. It. Okay, these are the things you have to set it up. Save, build now. is in progress it's taking time it's downloading Okay, now it's almost done. Yeah, see the code coverage has come here. See, so now you can integrate Jenkins with the Jaco code. So you should call the CC after which job? After the uh, after the acceptance testing. So let's call it configuration. 
post reaction and build other project and cc call it and save so now see this and build so now see that one more time we do that so this is the way you can continue and start doing lots of things okay so now what we did we we are doing the build uh, static code analysis uh, unit test packaging deploy to report deploy to queue accepting testing code coverage and all this thing so this is called ci and that's the reason we are using jenkins so now i am going to cover quickly some of the other functionality which might help you so now you want to integrate with the jira that means it's like this the moment it uh, base gets saved i'm just creating one in uh, scenario the moment the builds get filled automatically it should create a ticket and assign to devops team or build and release team or something like that so what you have to do manage engines manage plugins available install the jira plugins here it is and there is so many plugins you can see that jira trigger plugin issue probe data jira plugin you have to read that which are the plugins you need i need this plugin jira plugins install without restart and the moment you just set up the jira plugins let it get installed okay and jira plugin installation required the restart in fact okay. uh, uh, i did click on this oh uh, shit okay no problem it will be not taking more than 3 seconds जेंकिंग and you have to tell where your jira server you install the plugins that means plugin has a commands only jira commands but you have to tell where is your uh, jira, uh, jira server so you have to set this one here and jira server url link url user id password all these things you have to set it up and then validate setting okay once you are done with the settings okay once this is a one time setup after that you can come here go to the any job build job and configure and in the post build actions what you have to do you have to go to the add build post action and you can see this jira update relevant issues you can do the create issues you can create a new version you can make a new version as a release you can do a lot of things you know so all these things you can do that so this is the way you can also try many things okay so so far we did all this this was try to help you to visualize how the jenkins will talk to the different different tool with the the plugins and you can put it everything together so you can see that from the front end jenkins is doing everything but from the back end jenkins is calling each and every tool okay so this is how then you can set it up now what i'm going to do i'm going to quickly talk about other option of the jenkins job configuration so just i click on the here and configuration and in this software code management you know that you have a nan git your server version if you don't have your tools like tfs or force or any other tools what do you have to do install the plugins simple now in the build triggers some the options like we want to trigger this build through the scripts or you want to build periodically that means you want to set the cron here if you if you are not sure what any of this option go to the last question mark button and just click on it you'll get the nice tutorial for the each and every option and you'll get it okay so if you put this code here this will be trigger every 15 minutes like this so you can set this job trigger automatically scheduled you can do the scheduled and all this thing you can also uh, uh, use this option github uh, github uh, to hook trigger for the sfo this is setting up the hooks and stuff like that you can also do the polling as in that means you can set the triggers that means jenkins will check the github.com if there is new source code it will automatically update if there is no new source code jenkins will leave it as it is 
Now, if you talk about the build environment section, here you will see that you want to delete the workspace before every build start. You have to use, you want to avoid the build if something is idle for the 3 minutes, 5 minutes or something like that. You want to add a stamp stamp to the logs, control output or something like that. So these are the options you can set it up in the environment. In the build section, you can see that many options which you have it. In the, you can see here, you can call shell, you can call and, you can call uh, gradle, you can use batch script, you can use Linux script, you can use anything actually you can do that. In the post build actions also, you can send an email, here you have a send an email, email notification, you can send an email to recipients. If you want the advanced email notification system, editable email notifications, you can try and here you can define the two list, message, type, subject, this, that and all sort of things. And you want to attach the logs, you want to do a lot of things, you can try it out. So each and every option you have to try one by one and see that and experience that the job configuration. If you are not finding the, your option, that means you have not installed the right plugins. You go find out the plugins on the uh, plugins repository of the Jenkins, install the plugins and you get the options. Okay, any questions so far? Now, I'll tell you. Uh, if you can... Rajesh, uh, one question. Yeah. Hello? Uh, hello, Rajesh? Yeah, um, uh, for deploying to QA, uh, so where do we mention the QA deploy server in Jenkins? Okay, so how do you deploy to the QA server? How do you, which way you are using? So I just I just want to deploy to QA server. So yeah. how do I proceed? Like uh, so you have to tell me. If you want to deploy to the QA server, let's say you have one package, one WAR file, and you want to deploy to hundreds of machines, what do you do? Okay, I can use Chef. Yes. You can use Chef, you can use Puppet, you can use Shell scripting also, but you have lots of written, script has to be written. So basically, you have a Chef command which will be calling through life, and then ultimately, you will create one job, and that is what I did in the deploy to QA. I did configuration and the build tab, okay, I'm just calling the knife command here. So knife command will send that command to the Ceph server and Ceph server will take, uh, Ceph server has a cookbook which was written by you and cookbooks will take care of everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, now what I am going to do, I am going to try it out some of the management sections. So now, here is like this. Manage Jenkins, let's talk about each of these options in short. Okay, so here if you see that in the Manage Jenkins, you will see the configuration system. That means this option, you can set the configure global setting and path. So if you click here, you can set this like manage uh, Maven or um, Maven related or things where you can set the ops and all kind of things repository. You can set it up. You can set the number of executor. That means this number of executor is like this two. Why? So here, if you set four, that means four parallel build will happen. Four parallel build will happen. How come? So here it was having two. So in the build executor also only two parallel build was allowed. Here you can set the four and then apply. So now the number of executor is gone to the two to four. So let's refresh. Now you have a four. That means four parallel job can be happened with the server. Okay. So that is can be used. Okay. Now configure the system. Here you can see the labels, uses, white period, asymptote, checkout. So this is the self-explanatory. If you read once, you will get it. Okay. Here you can see the environment variable. 
which can be accessed through the by the Jenkins. You can set so the two locations also. You can set it up here. Okay, all these two location you can set it up. Here you can set it the for our user which you did it. Here you can set the some of the timestamp format. Here you can set the uh, GitHub account information. You have to set it up once and forget for every time. Enterprise servers you can set it up here. You can set the Jira related things here. You can set the Git plugins related things, server related things here. Cell executables here. SMTP servers you can set it up here. And here you can set the default email notification which can be used for sending an email out and. Here you again you can set up the emails notification doesn't it? So all these things if you go one by one, you can check it out depends on your requirement. You can set it up and then enjoy the things. Okay. Now if you go to the manage Jenkins here, global security. So in the global security, if you look at this, here you have two kind of security. One is security realm which you want to try and authorization. Okay, in this security realm, whether you want to use to delegate to server container, in that case, server container, that means if you want that your J Jenkins login to be enabled with the Twitter account or Gmail account or Facebook account or something like that, you can use the delegate to server container. That's not the real case scenario for our projects. Most of the time, we will be using Jenkins own user database, which is the second option, or LDAP. Okay, so if you are using Jenkins Full User Database, good. If you are using LDAP, you have to talk to this your IT team and then get this information and then verify it. Okay, so this is how. Now, once you set the security realm, then you have to set the authorization. That means what can you do when you are having what access? So basically, here he says anyone can do anything. That means you will understand what is the meaning of it. That means everyone will be allowed to do anything. Okay, here it says only the login user can do anything. That means you know that only the login user can do everything. But you don't want everyone to have every access even you don't want the login user to have every access. In that case, you have to use the pro matrix based project, just like this. Here you can set the permission for the each and individual user who is supposed to have a overall access, credentials, agent related access, job related like a build, cancel, configure, create, delete, discover, move, read, all these things you can set it up the checkbox and then run view and assign. So basically all these options, here you can add the user, here you can add the group. One important thing which you have to mindful about it, here the moment you enable this option and you did not add in users, so even the admin which was having the administrator access, you will lose the things. So you have to add it. The moment you are enabling this metric with security, you have to add yourself. My username is admin and the moment you add it, you have to give administrator access. Can you only you will get the access. Otherwise, you will lose the access. So now save it and now I have the access ADMIN ADMIN123. Okay, now if you want the another user to enable uh, the, uh, the registration, so what do you have to do here? Allow users to sign up. So just click on it here, save it, and log out. And now I'll create Rajesh. Uh, let's create a new account here. Create an account. So username is Rajesh. Rajesh123. Rajesh123. Rajesh. Rajesh at the rate of Rajesh.com. Sign up. I just sign up and now logged in. And you see that you don't have any access. Access denied. Why? Because your access is not added to the matrix based security. So what you have to do? See, admin will have to log in which I have got my access, manage Jenkins, global security and here you have to add Rajesh here and here you have to assign that whatever the access this guy needed. So you have to click on the check boxes and things like that, like this. So whatever the access you assign, this guy will get the same access and then everything will be taken. So now this is the way you play with it most of the options. Now you can try some of the options and then play with it. Okay, now one thing I wanted to, to tell you which I forgot on. So if you want to know the step-by-step -step information for the many of these things, so what I have done, come to the devopschools.com tutorials, 
Jenkins. Click on the Jenkins here, and here you have all these things, step by step information about all the scenarios. Here you have exercises. You have a PDF, all these things you have. Some topics, if you are not able to find it, send me an email. I'll upload this new topics uh, in the next morning or something. Okay? So, it's like this. So, whenever you start or if you want to do something, don't uh, get, you know, uh, you know uh, tense. Just ask me, I'll give you the information step by step information. So, this is the way you can set up and manage it. Now, we talked about the configuration system, we talked about the uh, global security. We talked also use the global tool configuration, which you can set where you can set the JDK, get, or all sort of the tools which you can set it up. Okay. Now let me talk about some of the systems manage Jenkins. Here, uh, manage plugins. We talked about it, and uh, logs. You'll get all the logs. Load statics. You'll get the statistics about the system server. Jenkins CLI. You can uh, use the command line interface. It's self-explanatory. All the tutorials you'll find here actually. Again, okay. And uh, manage nodes. I need to show you now. And manage users. So how many users you have? It as of now we have two users. We can edit, delete, modify whatever you want to do and stuff like that. So like this. Okay, so now the one important topics which I want to cover, in fact two or three, let's say, like Jenkins distributed concept, distributed concept. And second question which I want to address uh, in the Jenkins distributed concept, I talk about Jenkins nodes man. Okay, and now another things which I want to talk about Jenkins backup and restore. And some of the some of the useful uh, plugins I want to tell you now. Okay, so if you want to know the my useful plugins, which are the plugins which I am a fan of it. So if you want to know about this, just click on this useful Jenkins plugins. So here these are the plugins which is my favorite. As I said, there are more than thousands of plugins. So you have a requirement. There's a plugin for that. You need to find out. But these are the my plugins which I think basically very popular and very stable and very useful also. So you can try it out these plugins also. One of the plugins which I can tell you right away is like it's like this, which is very helpful for you. So you 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 have a Jenkins and you modify this job configuration by mistake. And you understood you did this some of the configuration wrong, and you don't know what exactly because sometimes your job configuration will be very complicated, very large, so many entries will be there. So how how can you uh, make sure that whatever you did the modification, you should keep track of it, right? So how can you do that? So there is no as such uh, things default available. So what you have to do, you have to enable and install the Jenkins plugin. So this one plugin which is called config history plugins okay so i'll go to the manage jenkins i'll go to the manage plugins and here go to the available and the plugin name is config history if i correctly job history job no let me get the real name it should be here uh huh. this is the this is the plugin job configuration history plugin so let me search the google this is the plugin name okay so i'll go and install here it is job configuration history plugins i just install it and this plugin will help you to manage and create the job configuration and their histories so let me show you I just install this plugin and now you go to this build and suppose I modified uh, the moment you install this plugin you got this job config history here option configuration and now suppose you modify compile to one one which is a not right goal it's a wrong goal but just to modify and the moment you did the build it get failed now what's the problem because if you have not if you have not this plugin installed probably you will have to you know go by each line of the code and sometimes if it's modification done by someone else then it's very difficult to keep track of it and you don't know sometimes what is wrong what is right and many times you spend time looking into it right so you have to spend time and that's the important thing is in the devops so you don't have to worry about after installing this plugin just click on this 
and see that what is the difference between the last and this just you have, see that this is the change which has been done and you can find out what is the change has been done and after this there is no okay i have to do one more changes because after installation i just only do one changes build now one more time it will fail and click on the configuration now you have two changes now you can see the bit difference between the two changes and now you can tell okay this is a change you had this one you modify this one and this is causing issues you can also tell you can also find who has modified what time it got modified so all this is a wonderful feature so that way you can track keep track of the configuration of the jenkins job and this is helpful so there is a lot of plugins also which can help you so you can go through this and you can find out which was which one is needed by you and which you can use it and then try it out and things like that. So, which will plug in, you have to try using these pages. Okay, now, how can you take a backup and restore? So, these are so many ways in which you can take a backup and restore. Basically, what if, whenever you take a backup, let me, let me show you here. I just go to the bad Lib Jenkins. This is the place where you have a Jenkins install. So let me tell you, whenever you want to take a backup, every file which is ending with .xml is supposed to be taken backup. Okay, the simple one. Any things, it uh, any places you can restore it. So all the jobs will be inside. Here it is. So now you will see that how many jobs you have it. Right? These many jobs you have it here. See these many jobs. So now you have taken these jobs and each job will be having config.xml. So basically whatever you do, whatever, here it is. Okay. So whatever you configure in each job is rewritten in the config.xml. So basically if you have this job, you can do, you can recreate this job any point of the time. So what you have to do, you have to take a backup. There's so many ways in which you can take a backup. In Google also, you'll find hundreds of scripts which will do the backups. One of the easiest way to do the backup is I'm using one plugin which is called Thin Backup. Okay. Again, I said there's a lot of ways in which you can take a backup. Again, I have a written one dedicated article for that. Uh, this is a page. Okay. Just click on it and you'll get the more information. But I am showing you one of the similar ways to take a backup, which is easy to do that, and is called through plugins. So you go to the manage plugin, manage plugins, go to the available section, and there is one plugin name which is called Thin Backup. Okay, okay. So you have to find your plugins actually. There are so many plugins. You have to find your light plugin which you like it. Okay. So I like it, this one, Thin Plugin, Thin Backup. I just install it. And I get stored. Now I configure it using manage techniques. And here this option is called thin backup. So you just configure it only once. So it's asking where you want to take a backup. So let's do this backup in the OPT directory. Okay. So OPT directory. IR Jenkins BKPs. This is the place I want to store the backup. So Jenkins BKP. So this is the directory. So now I just set it up. Here you can see who's the backup. Here you can set the backup number of backup. What are the things you want to back it up? So let's select the, all the things. All these things you want to take a backup. Okay. And done. And save it. Okay. So set, once your setting is done, it's a one-time activity. It says the directory edges but not writable. That means, let me tell you, all the Jenkins services you are running through the Jenkins user. See that? Jenkins is running your services. But if you look at this, it's it's owned by the root. So there's a permission issues actually. So remember anything which is owned by root, Jenkins is a user, root is the boss, so Jenkins will not be able to access this file. So what you have to do, you have to give either ch mode 777 or either you change the permission, ch own hyphen r Jenkins slash Jenkins and this is a directory. Sorry. Uh, ch own hyphen r Jenkins 
Jenkins user Jenkins group and what is the directory name? Directory name is this one. And now ls lrt this is the permission you changed from the root to Jenkins. Now just save it and open up one more time you see now this is writable. So now remember this directory which has sorry you have nothing see and now you're going to take a backup so click on the backup now you can see it also and now you have created a backup so it, it can create a backup then the more you click here and then the more changes you have it you can schedule it whatever you want to do you can do that it's very easy to take a backup now inside that remember i just said everything is in xml jenkins store so all the xml has been taken the backup here you have a jobs xml here you have a jenkins xml here you have a plugin xml here is user xml all the stuff so everything you have xml now what do you do you just delete some of the jobs. So let's go and delete this job. I just delete them. Accidentally I'm deleting, I'm considering, and what has happened? So now it's a problem because my system is not working. So what I'm going to do by mistake, it has happened. So what I should do, go to the manage Jenkins, click on the thin backup, and click on the restore and now you will be selected because I have only one backup so it has only one but if you have 15, 30, 20, 30 so whatever it will be shown click on this and select whichever you wanted let's leave it as, it, as of now okay and restore and Jenkins now still you don't have that those jobs which are deleted never worry it got created basically but you don't have right now why? because you have to do the reload so either you start the services but, or either you do the reload. There is an option which is called reload somewhere here. Reload configuration from the disk. Just click on it. You can restart the services also. That will work. And now you have a Jenkins job. Okay. So now you can see that all these things has been restored. So this is the way you can take a backup and you can do the restore also. Any questions so far? So how can we migrate uh, to another instance, Rajesh? You, you do one thing, you install the new Jenkins server, simple. You copy this whole directory over there, this directory, and install the thin backup, and you set it up to this directory and out there, like uh, uh, this one, thin backup, wherever you have a directory, backup, set it up this one, and just go and restore it. Automatically, it will read that file from there. Make sense? Uh, can you come again? Uh, I didn't understand. I got confused. Okay, so it's like this. You want to transfer from the one server to another server, right? Yeah. yeah. So you have this backup directory, you know, right? Okay. Yeah, copy this directory to the different machine server and install the thin backup. Okay, and in that thin backup settings, you do the directory where you have copied the backup files. The moment you set the backup file, automatically those options will come here, restore, and you select whatever the restore you want to do. Oh, okay, first we need to copy. That's the first basic thing we need to do, right? Yeah. To another server. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, how to restore only a single job instead of uh, taking a complete uh, restoration process? Huh, single jobs. Uh, so what you can do, uh, you go to the manage Jenkins, thin backup and restore. And here, if you want to take a single job, then you need to know where is a single job. So there is, I'll tell you the steps now manually. So this is the folder where you have taken the backup. Okay. Now what I will do, I'll go to the bar. I'll go to the uh, option which is called uh, what is that? What is that? Uh, lib and Jenkins is the place and inside the jobs Okay, and now I am deleting AAT. Okay, I am manually deleting it And now I go to Jenkins. Do you have AAT? Yes, but the moment you reload this configuration from This that is gone AAT should not be there 
because I deleted manually. Eight is not there. Now you said how can you restore it? So now you have to go to the OPT Jenkins backup, and inside that you have a full whatever it is. Inside that you have a job. And do you have AD? Yes, you have it. CP hyphen RF AD to var lib Jenkins jobs copied. Now, do you see that? No. So, what do you have to do? You have to go manage Jenkins reload configuration from the disk. You got it. Is that answer your question? Yeah, so from the backup location, we need to copy the particular job and paste it in the actual location, right? right yeah. Everything in the external file. Actually, Jenkins stored everything in external. Everything. Any other question? Uh, Rajesh, uh, I, wa I, I want to do a weekly backup or daily backup of these jobs. Uh, um so how can i do it uh, so can i schedule it uh, go to gym backup automatically to be done here you can schedule backup schedule for the full backup so you set this let me let's say you want to do it every every day 12 12 uh, every week day. set the time. okay 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 yeah, yeah thanks any other questions? Okay, now this is the last topic. Okay, last topic is Jenkins distributed concept. So here, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to add a node. So now, here I have a Jenkins server in the Linux RHCL. Now, it's like this. So scenario of the adding the nodes is like this. Let's say you have 10 job. Each of job required 4 hours to build. Okay. So in, in that way, you have required 40 hours to build all the jobs. But the, your project management says, no, no. You have to build all these 10 jobs in, on which take 4 hours, you have to build in 10 hours. So what are you going to do? You want to do. So you are going to increase the three more system. Okay. You are going to add three more system and which is basically nodes where you can send the jobs to be done. And then once the job is done, send the, the information on the server. So this is called distributed concept of the Jenkins. That means you are outsourcing the processing and compilation or anything whatever you want to do to the different machine so how can you do that that can be done through the nodes concept so how can you add a nodes you have to go to manage Jenkins click on the manage nodes and to add a nodes you need a very basic information one is like your name the host IP address second thing user ID and third thing user password or keys or and fourth thing, you need a directory where workspace can be created. Simple. Workspace can be created. Okay. So if you click on the, here is the master itself is the one acting as line node. But you click in a node, new node, name it node 1. Click on the permanent node. Click OK. Now you have to give the uh, remote directory, which is like this one. Okay, so where you want to set up a node, here you have to get that, uh, uh, what is the launch matter, so which one? Right, so if it is a SSH, Linux, you have to select the SSH, and then you have to give the host IP address, user ID and password, you can set it up here, and then you can save, and then it's get added. Okay, now let's put it 10.0.0. 0 0.5. This is a not a valid machine, but I'm just setting up just for showing you. And
done. So now you can see that node is set up, but it's not connected. Why? Because I gave. Rajesh, your voice is not clear. Oh, it's breaking. Okay, it's okay now. Is okay now. Guys, can you hear me? Guys, can you hear me? Suddenly, when my internet has got become slow.
Guys, can you hear me now? Hello? Guys, can you hear me now? Okay, sorry. So, suddenly internet got uh, some issues and something like that. Okay, so now in order to add a node, we have to add a host IP address, ID, password, or keys, and directory space. So, that's what we have to do. So now, if you saw this space, I added a node, but which was not the right IP address. So what I'm going to do, there's a many ways you can add it. Okay, so it's like this. Let's understand this. Here it is a server, Jenkins server. Okay, now this will get added. So the, the job should be sent to this server or this server, which you call it node 1 node 2. But sometimes what happens, in fact, node can connect to the server. So it should be both the way. Either Jenkins can send this node information to the nodes and connect to send the information or nodes also always see the connection from the Jenkins server. That is both the way it can happen. So now what I am trying to do here, this way I am not trying to show you but I am trying to show you here my Windows machine which can talk to the my Jenkins server. Okay. In this case, what I have to do, I have to do the prerequisite setup. So it's like this manage Jenkins. And this all these configurations details you have it already mentioned in the devschools.com. Okay. So I'll show you this one. So I go to the configuration system, not here, go to the security setup. I need to enable one option which is called this one TCP port for GNMP I'll put random save it the moment I enable this one in the manage node section I will get windows permanent node and here one option will get launch via web start so I'll have to create one directory structure in windows so that is Jenkins My, my machine has a windows already installed so I create a remote directory such as D Jenkins and and this is I'm just putting let it be and save it and the moment I click I need to run this on the command line so cd d Jenkins Okay, D drive Jenkins and here I need to copy this jar file. Save link as D, D Jenkins. That's all. So I'll need to go this path and run this command line. So jar file I Java is installing my machine and enter. So now my Windows machine, which is trying to talk to the server and is trying to connect to the server, which got happened, you saw that. Here it is. Trying the, the protocol, which is this one. Still is trying to connect and is connected. Now let me refresh this. You see this win Windows machine should be Manage Jenkins refresh is not happening properly. It's already connected. This sign should go but 
refresh status yeah now you see the sign has gone i just refresh now the moment you added this windows nodes what you can do you can build this job rather than the master server you can do the build so the moment you added the node you got this option restrict where this project can run so i just click on this and select the windows okay so now save so before that running let me show you another job which is let's say this job okay this is running where in the same machine so not this one let me show you some different job so now okay okay this is running where it's in same machine you can see this var lib jenkins da 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 right now i will run this job build now and now you see that it's running where in windows remotely on windows in this location okay that location is d jenkins workspace able here so now it's in progress is trying to check out the source code or whatever it is so this is the way you can add a node now is it loading you see that git is installed in my windows machines also so there's a reason it did not throw an error maven is also set it up so everything is set it up in windows so this is the way now you are outsourcing the job on the different machines so you can add linux you can add windows you can add mac anything you can add it and just you need this three four information host ip address id password and all stuff like that so i do not require ip address and password in this case in windows case why because from windows i was hitting to the jenkins server so in this case you don't require anything but the working directory but if your jenkins is trying to hit to the window uh, the machine then you got the user id host and then password and all stuff like that okay is that understood any question so far Uh, so Rajesh, when I create a job for this automated build job, and uh, do I need to build the rest of the jobs also in the same node, or can I do it in different node? Because I need to deploy to the Nexus repo also, right? So how is it uh, possible? You have to depend. Uh, see, Nexus is a different server, so you have to depend where you want to build. So configuration will be in your source code, right? Will be in the yeah. And now uh, you're breaking, Rajesh. Again, uh, I couldn't hear you. The why we would we is the nodes. The simple reason you want to distribute the job so you can do the more processing in the less span of time. That's the only one job. Nexus. Yeah, when I build a job in my Windows, so all the, uh, so like in the pipeline, I have another jobs also to uh, build. So, how is it going to take the workspace? So, is it possible? Like, I'm not sure. Uh, in the pipeline, uh, different jobs can be configured in a different nodes. Yes, yes. So yes. One pipeline. A build is like configured in the Windows. UT is happening with the master. A pack is happening master. So this see, you can do the any job in any things, but the display will be remain same. Okay, okay, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Rajesh. So there is something like a Jenkins pipeline as as a code. Uh, is there something different? Jenkins pipeline as a code means. Sorry. I. Oh, I think uh, he was asking like uh, rather than defining the build steps. Um, I mean we can write a DSL script like uh, we we have to install a DSL plugin in Jenkins so that we can write all the steps as a code. Thing also. It's so there in the DSL plugin. So I have written this plugin, which is very important. Uh, so you have to try this plugin. Uh, the plugin name is DSL, which is here. Okay. You can write the Groovy scripts and all the stuff like that. Okay. 
Any other questions? Okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to wrap up this session now. With this, I am going to upload this video by evening. Okay. So you want to practice it tonight uh, and after this class also, and try it out. Let me tell you all this con all this sample jobs. I have kept it here. Okay, all these jobs. So if you want a list, get the list of jobs. So here you can get the list of jobs in the exercise. Okay. So all these jobs I have put it here. Assignment one to six. Okay, and it's there in the, my repository. You can get the URL on the doubleschools.com. You can try it out, build it, see the different options. If you are not able to get something, uh, put it in the forum. If you are getting the error, put it in the forum. If you are not getting some solutions, send me an email for that. I'll create a solution and I upload the tutorials in the next 24 hours or something. Okay, and try it out. And tomorrow we're going to meet up. Uh, for the our next session, which is like a one and a half hours, we'll spend for the essentials of the topic, and one and a half hours we'll spend on the next session fundament. Okay. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Want to study further? Subscribe to our paid membership to get a deep dive into each and every topic. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our DevOps School channel and hit the bell icon to learn more. Keep learning.